Good morning, class. Today we're going to talk about God's nature. And our scripture comes from John 4, 24. It says, God is a spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. We also want to take a look at, I'm going to read to you Psalms 19, set verses 7 through 10. And it says, the law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The rules of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than the honey and drippings of the honeycomb. So in reading that, I wanted to bring out the nature of God, how God is, things are pure with him and his nature and how he cares for us. And it is a lovely concept to worship God in both spirit and in truth. But what exactly does it mean to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth? When Jesus tells us we must worship in spirit, he is referring to the fact that our worship needs to come from the heart. Worship must be genuine because even you being a human being can tell when somebody is faking it. So you think God can't tell when we fake and worship to him? You think he's accepting anything in any way we want to come to him? No, he's not. So you wouldn't want nobody to be unreal to you, right? Of course not. So God is the same way. He wants us to be 100. He made us. He knew about us anyway. So we might as well come genuinely with all that we have and be honest with him. And so he'll help us. And that way we can worship him in spirit and in truth as he so desires. Worship must be genuine. The notion of worshiping in spirit completely blots out the idea of legalism, rituals, and repetition. Because when it's 100% pure, it's just all in. And everything else around you is forgotten. So don't worry about what your friends may think about you because you'd want to choose to serve God. You, you be that example of him. Because he said he'll make your enemies be your footsteps. So don't worry. You got a bully? Hey, stick with God. Pray and ask God and he'll help you. He'll give you exactly what to do because you have the nature of God in you. You have the spirit of God abiding in you. Okay, so let's be encouraged and remember, hey, the nature of God um, is coming to him, serving him in spirit and in truth because he's a spirit. Okay, so let's make this very clear, this clear point that God himself is a spirit. God is not simply a more complex physical being or a limited creature. In other words, God is not restricted to seeing, hearing, and being in a single location, like you and me. We can only be at one place at one time. Knowing this helps us to keep Genesis 1.26 correct in context. The fact that man is created in the image of God does not mean we have the same physical resemblance to him. And a lot of times we think that. When we hear the scripture talks about we made of the image of God, we put God on the same level as us, like, like a human being like us. But no, that's not what that's saying. So what we want to what we do share with him is the moral and the rational nature of God. Okay? So how can I apply this to my life? Let us not be found guilty of appearing religious rather than loving God with our entire being. It's about the relationship and your relationship with God, that is one-on-one, so you can be real with him, because he's definitely gonna be real with you. When Jesus tells us to worship in spirit, he is referring to the Holy Spirit. This is certainly plausible as Jesus, meaning could be twofold. Worshipers must worship with a genuine spirit, as well as we must worship in the Holy Spirit. In other words, true worshipers must have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, otherwise, there's no way you can possibly worship him in spirit and truth if you don't have his spirit in you. So that's something to think about, which only occurs in a person like you and I who places faith in Christ and we open our mouth with a sincere, repentant heart and ask God to fill us with the Holy Spirit. It really is just that simple. 
and he will do it. The Holy Spirit indwells all believers, as Apostle Paul tells us, guard the good deposit that was entrusted into you. Guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. In 2 Timothy 1.14, therefore, a, the criteria of worshiping in spirit means an individual has to be born again believer and worship God genuinely from the heart. Jesus' statement of worship <laughs> includes the aspect of worshiping him in truth as recorded in John 4, 24. In addition to worshiping God in spirit, the worshiper must also worship God in truth. This means that the worship must be done in accordance with the truths of the Bible. Worship done in truth cannot be based on false doctrine or er erroneous teachings of the Bible. If a church congregation or an individual is singing a worship song with a faulty doctrine, then the worship is not true worship. Worship that is approving, approving to God is done in the truth of his word. All forms of worship should be in alignment with the truth of God's word and contains biblical correct words. When saints worship, we must worship both in spirit and in truth. Although a time is coming and has come when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, true worship must engage the heart, the affections, and our total being. Then we will see change in our life for the good. Worship is closely connected with singing, but it can be done in every area of our life. We can worship God in our actions every day. For examples, like obeying him, serving him, and loving on him. And in conclusion, why does worshiping God in spirit and in truth matter? Should it matter? Of course it should. God desires for us to worship him with our whole heart, our soul, and our very being. When we worship God, he is looking at our hearts. What matters to God is the state of the heart. Worshiping in spirit and in truth is the goal for all saints, for it brings glory to his name. May we all come before the God in spirit and in truth, just as the word says, come let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, this is from Psalms 95, 6. Well, let us pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for filling our children and everyone listening and or watching with the Holy Spirit. And give them the amazing ability to pray to them and to pray you in a supernatural language. What a privilege, Lord, for each of us to desire to express ourselves through prayer and worship to the Almighty God. Many times words cannot express how we feel about you, Father. Through prayer and praise in the spirit, according to the word, we are praying perfectly and praising you when we do it in our supernatural language. Hallelujah. Thank you for coming and hopefully you'll join us next week as we continue to talk about what does the Bible say about who God is?